Hey everyone and welcome back. What I have for you today is my latest 3D printed air pump slash water pump. This seems to be a decent improvement over the piston pump. It's a little bit more efficient and much easier to build. I've tried this pump with a few different motors. The first being a salvaged hard disk drive motor. This one being three pole brushless. I've also successfully used the 80 millimeter fan system that I tried on the previous pumps. I actually managed to have this one pumping water. I had it running for a couple days until the connecting rod got so hot that it melted the crank where it bolts in and everything kind of got loose and it seized up. So that's when I designed the bearing version of the connecting rod. I've also made a general brushed motor adapter. It will probably fit a couple different brushless motors and other motors. However, it's designed anywhere from the 380 motor all the way up to the 540 motor. And I'm currently using the 450 motors here. I managed to find a practical test case here. I have this old snow machine and it's got a non-removable gas tank. And the fuel that's in it is disgusting. It keeps plugging up carburetors and fuel filters and light. So, I sealed off the filler neck. I put pressure to the return line and I'm using the line that would normally fuel the engine to dump into the can. This ended up working really well and I managed to get all the nasty fuel and other crap that's sitting in the bottom of the tank out and cleaned out for the most part. All good for next year, I guess. As you've seen at the beginning of the video, I did the 10 pound weight lift with the same volume of bags. You can tell here it does a little bit quicker, although I sped the footage up right here. With the brushless motor drive, I did a pressure test off screen and got between 1 and 3 pounds depending on our PM. So I hooked it up to this terrible gauge here to show you guys, it doesn't really show very well. And I put a tank on it to see if there's a little bit more volume and cushion kind of helped with the pressure. I ended up seeing the same about 3 pounds here and it's enough pressure to actuate the little air cylinder I'm playing with as well. I was hoping to see a little bit more pressure. It doesn't seem to be a power issue. I'm thinking that the diaphragm is too large and it's only pushing down in a small area. I'm toying with a little bit of like a printed spider piece that will kind of stiffen the diaphragm. The other thing is the material that I'm using for the reed valves. It's not really the best and doesn't seal 100%. And to improve this overall, I should look into some different materials. However, I have a good supply of this PVC sheet, and it's easy to cut with the laser. So, see what I can find otherwise. So, I did this test with the piston pump, but didn't show you guys. And I come up with a ballpark CFM of about a quarter. A quarter CFM. I did this and did the rough math and I get about 0.44 CFM. So it's just shy of being double the flow rate of the piston pump. Mind you, I'm running it faster on a better motor and with more power, but you know, I guess I like comparing apples to oranges. I was also hoping to pop the balloon, but it seems that bouncing around on the hard icy snow has poked a bunch of little holes and now it leaks faster than the pump can push any pressure into it at that kind of pressure. Also, my CFM calculations would be considered with no load or at, you know, atmospheric pressure or zero. As I mentioned before, it also moves water all right. Now I'm using the brushed motor on this just because it's easier to power. And I'm not sure if I trust those little brushless motor controllers to be, you know, ignored. Now I'm running this motor at about a quarter of the voltage it normally sees. This motor is rated for 48 volts and I'm running it at 12 so the flow rate here could easily be increased. However, running it at lower voltage, you know, runs a little bit more efficiently. Also, if you're wondering what I'm up to here, I'm dumping solar power into resistors in this water tank, and then I'm pumping the water to a transfer system that I have on the inlet of my hot water tank. The idea is to preheat the water going into the hot water tank at least a little bit to save a little bit of money, hopefully. As per most of my builds, I'm sharing the files for this, and the link will be in the description. And I'm going to show you how to assemble the whole thing. Before we start assembly though, after the parts are printed, I want to lap all the parts, and I recommend you do so as well if you want this to perform the best as it can. To lap the parts, all I'm doing is taking a sheet of glass and a sheet of sandpaper, emery cloth, whatever you got, and then 
putting it on the glass and then just rubbing the piece on there. It's not 100% perfect. This isn't the best way to lap something, but for these plastic parts, it definitely improves the sealing surface. For the gaskets, diaphragm, and reed valves, I use the paper for the gasket and PVC sheet that I bought from the local dollar store for the diaphragm and reed valves. I have also tried silicone sheet, which has worked, but seems to run at a lower pressure. It's a little bit too flexible. Once all the gaskets are cut, I assemble the head, starting by putting the four screws in and then sliding the gaskets, the reed plate, and the reed valves onto the screws. Then I screw that whole assembly to the main body of the diaphragm, making sure that you orient the in and out so that everything is labeled properly. Now to connect the diaphragm to the connecting rod, I'm using the bearing connecting rod on this version. Now this takes an M3 by 4 screw as well as a washer and also an o-ring seems to help with the sealing on this hole. Make sure that the bearing hole in the connecting rod lines up with one of the mounting holes on the diaphragm itself. Now it's just a matter of using the M4 bolts to mount the top plate motor mount diaphragm to the main body and you can kind of orient this however you like whichever works for your application according to the two mounting bolts on the side of the main body of the diaphragm housing. So it turns out this version of the 450 motor has the same size shaft as a 540 motor. So that being said, I ruined the original crankshaft that I mounted on the other one. So I printed this one, and this one has to be assembled after the motor is in the frame. Once that's done, you put the screw in the connecting rod. Now for this application, I'm using two O-rings and a washer just to kind of keep everything snug. This is to hopefully cut down on some of the oscillating noise that it creates. And they're all assembled, and I'm going to test it on 24 volts just to see how it works. And it looks like another successful build. And now on to the final thoughts. I'm rather happy with how this turns out. It's worked very well for a couple different applications, and I'm sure I can find a few more. With some material upgrades across the board, I should be able to increase the performance of this unit. However, for something like an aquarium pump or, you know, pond pump or whatever, or my hydroponic system, this seems to work very well. There's also no reason why I couldn't make a motor mounting plate that'll adapt three or four different pumps to one motor, and yada yada yada. The sky's the limit, as usual. But anyways guys, that's about all I got for you. So if you appreciate what I'm doing here, click the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.